Welcome to Study Buddy, meditation philosophy for the heart of your practice. This is a live online discussion of ancient yogic texts amongst meditation practitioners in the Shambhavananda yoga tradition. My name is Acharya Satyam, a resident teacher at Konalani Yoga Ashram in Hawaii, and I welcome you with love and respect. All right, so tonight uh, is Dharana 4 of the Vigyana Bhairava. Um, this sort of concludes the close attention to the breath and to this to the pause between the breath uh, in the Vigyana Bhairava for a little while. Um, and obviously Dharana 4 is our focal point tonight. We're going to learn how to slow down in order to not just experience the pause between the breath, but to experience the entire breath itself more fully, more clearly, you know, and with more sensation. And in my experience of working with it, hopefully the work that we do tonight will become a resource for you, as well as helping you relate to the pause in your breath more naturally, you know, to see it sort of as a part of your practice, you know, as a part that's here to really support you and be almost like a lifeline when you need it. So before we pull the dharana apart and talk about all the pieces and the commentary, etc., let's take the first minute to literally sit with the dharana itself. Uh, I'll read it out and we can just take a minute to literally just be with it. Just see where it lands for you. So from your comfortable seat. <clears throat> when the breath is all out, up and stopped of itself, or all in, down, and stopped. In such universal pause, one's small self vanishes. This is difficult only for the impure. When breath is all out and stopped of itself, or all in and stopped, in such universal pause, one's small self vanishes. This is difficult only for the impure. The breath is a ceaseless pulsation. That was how it was described in Dharana 1. A ceaseless pulsation of the goddess Shakti, of life force, a spondic throb. When the breath pauses, as we saw in the last Dharana, talking about fusion, there's a moment where this ceaseless pulsation sort of fuses into stillness, a stillness that is not separate from the breath, but is rather a unique experience of the breath. It's a moment when this wave-like pulsation, these waves of the, of the physical reality, of the mental realities, they become perfectly still, and we can see through manifestation to an experience of our true nature. This moment comes and goes 25,000 times a day, and yet we're usually not present for it. It is a fleeting moment. And we might think at first, oh, well, if I just hold the breath a little bit between, you know, the, the, the movement, if I hold it, then I can feel the pause, but alas, 
as we know from our experience, from the teachings, from the sutras, that's not the path that actually leads us to this experience we seek. That's just the path that leads us to experiencing our own effort and our own will, you know, that we're already enmeshed in all day long. So what other options are there? How do we, how do we explore this pause without the will? Um, as Swami Muktananda teaches in his text, I Am That, which is really all about the breath uh, in, in the ways that we've been talking about it specifically, um, we're taught that if we can expand our experience of the breath, then we very naturally start to expand the pause associated with the breath. And that brings us to a quote. Marcella, would you mind reading this quote? The state of stillness, which occurs when the syllables merge inside and outside, is natural kumbhaka. You don't have to make a deliberate effort to hold your breath, because as you practice homsa, the time of suspension of breath begins to expand. The duration of the kumbhaka increases naturally. Thanks. So this moment of stillness on, on all levels uh, occurs when this breath sort of merges with stillness. As we talked about in the last dharana, fuses. This is kumbhaka, the space between our breath, puraka, the inhale, rechaka, the exhale, kumbhaka, the still point. As we know, because we've been reminded about this every time this practice comes up in our tradition, it's not about holding the breath. Um, but rather, as you deepen your practice of hamsa, of breath awareness, the time of suspension of breath, as Muktananda describes it, the duration of the pause increases naturally. But, as the sutra, or the dharana rather, reminds us of, is a, it's a funny end to the dharna, I think. This is difficult only for the impure. Who's the impure? Um, I think it might be me. I think it might be us, you know, a lot of the time. Um, this concept of the impure is actually sort of a focal point for our work tonight because understanding what's meant by that actually helps us understand the challenges of, of the practice overall. So, we know from study after study after study of our culture right now um, that we are stuck in a um, overstimulated sympathetic state of the nervous system okay so the idea is that the sympathetic nervous system is is your thinking planning scheming getting work done uh, you know, kind of state of being. Uh, we access it all the time, actually almost endlessly. Uh, when you're in this state, you're getting work done. It's real. It's a part of our life, right? Um, but it's also a state of your nervous system that slows down sort of all the, the cleaning and repairing aspects of our, bio of our biology. So, for example, when you're in the sympathetic state, um, your digestion slows down, your cellular repair systems slow down, and this is also that they can put all the energy into, you know, eyesight, heart rate, uh, respiration, perspiration, all these things that you need to get through your day, suppose, you know. And we have to think long term about, about what we're talking about here, you know, literally running from something, running after, you know, an animal, etc. And so this would be the equivalent of being in a really big hurry uh, during your morning, like you're late, right, for work. And so uh, the toothbrush and the toothpaste are sort of still on the counter. The wet towel is still on the unmade bed. The breakfast dishes are in the sink, right? And you get to work on time. 
this time and then you come home and supposedly you're supposed to be in this different state where you can sort of repair and, and pick up after this experience but that's that's what we're talking about tonight we don't pick up after this experience we're actually still in the sympathetic state we get home from work and we're still thinking about work or we're moving on to perhaps you know worrying about uh, what's for dinner or there's a lot of other things constantly we're constantly running after and so what we find is these uh, metaphorical dishes in the sink uh, just keep piling up and this in my opinion is what these impurities that this uh, Dharana is describing this is the impurities that makes it hard to meditate so when we sit quick get home you know from work in the evening or even literally right now this class uh, and you sit down to meditate like we did with that Dharana four minutes ago it's not super easy it's like there's a lot of layers between you and this subtle experience right so I just wanted to take a moment to look at a, a quote about this from a scientific perspective just because sometimes that helps people I know it helps me sometimes relate to the information and sort of open up to it um, Bob could you read this quote for us just about what I was, I was talking about it's a little bit longer but it's not very dense it's sort of just descriptive uh, unfortunately, the audio from the Zoom was lost, so I'm going to read the quotes here. When you check your phone or hear an alert, you activate your sympathetic nervous system, the part of your body that's always scanning the environment. It gives you a little shot of adrenaline for every interaction. That adrenaline, which is meant to trigger your body to pay attention, sets off a cascade of chemicals that increases heart rate, pulse, and muscle tension and shunts energy from the brain to the muscles. It will take 5 to 30 minutes for your body to get back to baseline after every one of these alarms, which is a problem in a world where cell phones rarely stop. Essentially, people don't ever come back down to baseline. We have one stress after another after another. All that stress wreaks havoc on the body and mind, causing or contributing to a range of diseases from heart disease and depression to sleep deprivation and chronic fatigue. From the article, The Hidden Stress of Cell Phones, published by UC Health. Hmm. So, sort of what I just said, sort of what we all know. We're all starting to hear this information very regularly. But these are also concepts that existed 4,000 years ago or more. I mean, it's not just phones that cause the mind to be busy and people to experience stress. This has always been our work. This has been the work that we're trying to accomplish in order to experience our true nature, right? It takes different forms. You know, there could be a whole other class on that. But we've got it now. We had it then. We're still doing the same work. And it revolves around this concept. Now, what's the way to this pause this holy grail that sits in between our breaths that sort of washes us purifies us uh, that allows us to re-experience this amidst all this stuff that's happening how do we get to that pause consciously without our will slow down right slow down what has Babaji been saying for literally in the last year and a half slow down and we got to learn how to consciously relax because if we can learn how to do that then ah, the stress can fall away and this is a biological necessity and it's also like a biological birthright like you're built with this parasympathetic nervous system as well even though we're talking about more subtle things your your body's built like this too to have moments where things get done and then have moments when things get released right and so we've got a quote here from Babaji that sort of speaks to this concept of slowing down um, as a means of working on ourselves energetically. Um, Chaitanya, would you mind reading this uh, quote for us? Oh, and I should preface this quote. The student asked Babaji, I have been bothered, because it's not in the written part, I have been bothered lately by tightness in my heart. Can you suggest a way for me to release that tension? Try to breathe slowly and feel your navel. As you exhale, relax deeply. Don't focus on an area where the congestion is. Focus below it or beyond it. 
you have to draw the energy down. Your type of experience usually has to do with the energy coming back up the chakras. You have to breathe very slowly and deeply below the tightness and into the navel and then relax and release. It is helpful to inhale slowly to a count of one, two, three, then exhale to the same count. Sometimes students inhale and exhale too quickly. From Spiritual Practice, Sri Shambhavananda. Ah, so as Babaji's teaching here, he's in that first sentence it says very clearly, breathe slowly and start to feel, and then he goes into more specifics that could have to do with us, could have to do with a specific student, but some of the extracting sort of moments here is slow down and start to feel. And then when you can feel, you can release, you can relax. There's this like sort of like, ooh, we gotta walk our way there. And so the yogic tradition has always sort of taught us that we have to learn how to do this sort of, as Rudy might say, layer by layer, layer by layer, layer by layer. And the form of the koshas describe this. Uh, Patanjali's eight limbs of yoga describe this. It's, it, it's pretty much everywhere in the yogic tradition. The upayas describe this. But the idea is that you sort of work your way through these layers. And the first layer is this physical body. And that is the practice of asana. Um, about, what, six weeks ago now, I feel like, Anju's presentation was specifically about her coming back to her yoga practice in order to get her mechanism moving at this physical level so that it could keep moving into the subtler levels. She was talking about how she was hitting some pretty strong blocks that came from like, you know, her literally getting this long-term COVID and things like that, that really piled it on for her. And that it was just so hard to just sit and like breathe through it or just, just do a mantra to break through it that she realized that, and this is, you know, according to her presentation, that the mechanism needed to start moving at this physical level so that it could start moving at the subtler levels. Now, a lot of the times we want to skip over that. You know, we just want to get right to the breathing or just get right to the mantra or get right to the heart. And sometimes that might work. But for the sake of our work tonight and sort of exploring, trying to find this pathway to the pause that's real, I wanted to take just a little bit extra time to, to practice together and to sort of move through these layers. You know, as you know, we started to incorporate uh, a yoga class, asana class, into our Thursday rotation uh, because Babaji literally said people need to learn how to relax. And he's been telling us to relax so many times. And it's just like, okay, if you can do it on the physical level, that's going to take you to the breath. Confession, writing this presentation, I could feel that I was in a subtle state of fight flight. It's sort of, I've been working on it for weeks and then it as always comes down to the last hour where I'm like cleaning things up, making slides. Just and I could feel like I was in this jittery space and I would like stop and breathe and then start to work again and it would just jittery right, o right away. And I was like, okay, well guess what I'm gonna do? Some yoga, some slow yoga in the way that we've been teaching it, you know, for these last few years, we've really been incorporating these principles. And that was, it got me going in the right direction. I was able to sustain that, that slower space as I returned to the screen, you know, to type. So I wanted to do some yoga with you all tonight. Slow stuff, you don't need much space. I don't have a mat and I'm literally wearing a kurta. This is not gonna be some big deal, but it's, uh, it's gonna be enough to where we can breathe and move and feel. And then we're going to bridge that into the breath. And we're going to slow down the breath. Just like Babaji said, we're literally going to count a little bit and breathe like that. And then we'll revisit the dharana and see if your experience of the pause isn't, as Muktananda says, naturally more expansive. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> so we're going to start with some gentle bouncing in place. This is, uh, it's meant to be... It's like a, it's actually a method for releasing uh, subtle tension that gets accumulated in our muscle tissue. 
We'll revisit this at the end and go a little bit deeper with it, but in the beginning, this is sort of the simplest approach. Then you just sort of slow it down, feel the bend in the knees, feel the joints all participating, and then uh, easy shake, and we'll revisit that later too. Okay, so go ahead and just take a nice uh, straddle that's not too big. You want to feel sort of athletic. You can bend in the knees and just start to sway a little bit side to side and feel the weight shift in your feet. So that's the first step is you have to actually feel the weight shift and then as the weight shifts into a foot, that foot is what pushes you to the other side. So you're sort of pushing and then catching into your other foot. What's really fun is to start to feel like this isn't just about your feet, that your whole body sort of slightly changes from side to side that little bit of a ripple effect. Awesome. And then just sort of arrive at center. All right, I'm going to be turning. Uh, the mirroring thing is tough. I can't remember which setting I have it on right now. So I'm just going to say my actual foot. Uh, you're going to turn your right foot out and turn your left foot in and let your hips totally face to the side. So we're in that heel to heel stance and our, we're not, our hips are following our right foot. So I apologize if you're not looking at the screen or anything, but you can follow me pretty easily. Bend your knee, that front knee, and then press it back up. So bend and straighten it a couple of times. And the next time you bend the knee, just pause over the ankle. And you're going to lightly scoop the air up in front. And notice the very sort of subtle condensing around your navel that occurs. And then slowly release the hands. It can be helpful to sync this up with an exhale. So the exhale takes your arms up to about the horizon line, not much higher and then the inhale can take you back down. Again, you're trying to feel for this deep, subtle condensing around the midsection of the body, and it's meant to be very light. This is actually the 1% core that is what's holding your posture throughout the day. The next time the arms lift up to about halfway, pause for a moment and consciously relax your shoulders. It can be easy to hold tension in our shoulders throughout the day for all the reasons we've been talking about. So keep those shoulders sort of heavy as you let the arms continue to drift up and just keep re-relaxing the shoulders. You can even roll them out as the arms go up. Allow yourself to have a focal point. This can be a little challenging on the balance and feel like there's no tension in your shoulders, like you're holding the slightest beach ball you've ever felt. Awesome, so this is uh, Virabhadrasana one, of course but feel like the whole body is subtly participating. Your feet, your hips, your torso, your shoulders, and your hands stress-free, face relaxed. We'll let the arms slowly come down and just for a moment, shift your weight onto that front foot and literally play with uh, how you wanna play with your balance. You're just gonna shift your weight into that foot Lift the back foot a hair or don't. Literally be safe and feel good, but just allowing that all the weight to condense into that one leg can sometimes be very stimulating for a grounding purpose, just to feel like, okay, there's the ground, wow. All right, from there, the foot behind you finds the earth. You can turn back towards me. Some circles with the hips, releasing any tension that can accumulate. And other direction. As you circle the hips, try to feel the hip sockets. Try to feel the relationship the pelvis is, the sort of has with the spine and how the front and the back of the body are participating. Like your abdominals are actually responding when the hips go forward, right? And then the back of the body as they go back. All right, you might want to heel toe a little bit more in so you can bend your knees easily. We'll scoop the air up one more time here at front. Actually, let's slow that down do that one more time and feel the condensing around the navel, just like we were trying to do before. And then you're going to deflate like a balloon. Everything deflates as you fold forward. Forward folds often are associated with like our hamstrings. I want you to forget about all that and just sort of focus on the experience. Please also, I didn't mention it. I'm sorry. You could have a block in front of you. Your hands could be on a chair. Your hands could be on a table. Um, but in any case, I want you to just focus on the inversion quality, the feeling of a little bit of pressure, you know, where it's harder to get that blood flow like in the head. 
this is almost the experience of like diving underwater if you think about it when that pressure sort of increases allows the spine to release built up pressure and then coming up slowly feel free to bring your hands to your knees if you need any assistance here um, but as you press the feet down it's the forward pressing of the hips that rolls the spine up your hands can assist you all the way if you like and when you get to the top you're just going to roll shoulders back heel toe the feet in a little bit more so there's no work happening in the hips and before we do the other side just pause and watch your breath flow slow the breath down a little bit as if you were breathing in slow motion no strain at all just a little bit longer than normal we're going to be coming back to the breath in a few moments See if you can bring that awareness to it now and, and bring it with you into the next few movements. Keep that attention on the breath even as you open your eyes, turning to your left. Let the hips turn with the, to the left with you. Don't let them face where they were. We'll bend the front knee a couple of times. That'll indicate a good stance for you. If your knee just goes way over the ankle and it's like super easy, you might want a longer stance so that you feel like as the knee bends, it feels like you almost like find your center. Next time the knee bends, uh, feel free to make the, the feet wider if you have any trouble balancing. And we'll scoop the arms up, feeling the condensing around the torso, your deep core. Inhale, can take your arms down. And take your time with this. We're trying to feel that subtle condensing around the torso. It's so subtle. It's meant to be subtle. This is literally an experience of almost how we would describe the subtle body from a physical perspective. That's the level of work we're talking about. Next time the arms go halfway up, pause, consciously relax shoulders. You can waggle the head a little bit. And then take your time lifting the arms up and try to keep relaxing the shoulders as the arms go up so that when they arrive up the arms are light like a beach ball and you feel the whole back side of your body feel the heel behind you feel that length up the back of the body which is normally sort of rounded forward feel that nice subtle lift and length coming up through the heart relax and waggle the head shoulders can relax down and we'll you know I forgot to do this on the other side but I'm just gonna do it for fun now asymmetries we're gonna live with that turn away so turn into that front leg so you can get a little bounce just a little buoyancy and you can and then you're gonna take that buoyancy and you're gonna spin forward into your straddle that was sort of the original vision oh and then we're gonna go the other side you're gonna turn towards that leg it's like a little uh, sort of turn, I don't know how to describe it. And then we'll go back up. And then your knees bend. Yeah, feel free to do it again if you like. And then just deflate like a balloon. This is the end of the sequence. Don't worry about the hamstrings. Instead, focus on that, that little bit of pressure. And it's a good pressure. It's like that pressure of diving underwater. That inversion pressure. It's totally natural, totally healthy. We don't get it a lot during the day, you know. And then feel free to heel toe the feet in a little bit if that feels more supportive. You press the feet down, the hips sort of go forward, the hands can support you on the legs as you roll up. And when you do get all the way up, shoulder rolls. And then similar to how we started, easy bounce. And then finishing with a subtle shake. <sighs> All right. And now uh, we'll find our seat. <clears throat> so moving from the physical kosha into the pranic level, the pranamaya kosha um, means turning to our breath, right? And so we slow down the physical body. Hopefully your seat right now feels spacious, feels buoyant, 
feels uh, full of vitality, right? And as you turn to your breath, your body feels still, but it feels alive. And so you're welcome to have your eyes gently open or closed for this. Well, we're, we're going to practice um, some balanced breathing. And that starts by just watching the inhale and exhale and lengthening them out as minimally as possible, but, s but lengthen them out a little bit so that you're smoothing them and evening them out. This is almost like doing a yoga stretch with a lot of awareness and, and, and not going for your knees to nose kind of thing. You're just you're just lengthening the breath. I've also been experimenting with the idea of this cue being try to breathe in slow motion. Try to breathe in slow motion. Now what you're doing right now is an incredibly beneficial pranayama. It's one of the most foundational, but it's also one of the most powerful. Balanced breathing, slowing down the breath. Now I'm going to offer uh, the opportunity to, to breathe according to a, a count. And the reason this count exists is because it's been shown to be an ideal length of breathing for oxygen assimilation, you know, and down-regulating the, the nervous system. That doesn't mean it's the right count for you, though. It's going to be five and a half seconds. If it feels like there's any strain, just mute me for a minute, because that's as long as it's going to last, and go to four seconds on your own. Do your own thing. But I'm going to count up, and that's your inhale, and then I'm going to count down, and that's your exhale. <coughs> And here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, Five, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. One, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, and breathing your own pace. You're welcome to keep counting for a little longer. So try to tap into, instead of being attached to the counting, try to tap into the experience of balanced breathing and use that minute of experience to just inform what balanced breathing might feel like for you. It's meant to be easy. It's not a strain. It's not a windy pranayama as the Gita describes.
You can, of course, bring the mantra hum to the inhale, sa to the exhale. And allow your awareness to continue transitioning away from directing the breath, although that is in that it's just inherent when you're watching it sometimes, to trying to feel for this balanced breathing. Trying to feel the body knows how to breathe so so well. We're just always getting in the way. So try to feel how the body wants to breathe to promote balance right now, as it would. As Muktananda said, you don't have to make a deliberate effort to hold your breath because as you practice hamsa, the time of the suspension of breath begins to expand. The duration of the kumbhaka increases naturally. And from this vantage point, we can encounter the dharana once again. When breath is all out and stopped of itself, or all in and stopped, in such universal pause, one's small self vanishes.
You know, those three bells symbolize the physical, subtle, causal worlds, you know, the layers that we work through to find that pause. And so hopefully as we took time to really feel those layers and work with them, tonight it just shows that one foot in front of the other, these slower, steadier steps can have a more pronounced effect than sort of the feeling of trying to jump to your center or, or somehow bypass the process to at least take the opportunity to, to feel and to slow down and to notice and to work even if it's just for 30 seconds with the body, with the breath and then let that take you to these subtler spaces. So let's take the next couple minutes to um, journal about your experience. Uh, you know, we covered a lot tonight, and to just let yourself explore it. Again, I think this is sort of a part of the process of sort of re-entering that physical level, but while we maintaining that connection to the heart, and and see how you might describe it. And if writing feels like it's put you in your head, write a poem. Write a koan, you know, write a one-sentence uh, explanation of your experience. Write a haiku. You know, don't feel limited by what you have to write. So we'll take a couple minutes for that. Taking a moment to finish your thought. Reread and underline a keyword that might be the, the title of what you wrote. We can start to share them in the chat box as we're ready. All right. Wonder, Om, 
relaxing into the present. Enjoy the ease, blissful ascending, still movement, grounding, relaxed inside and out, awareness without a container or form. And though there was some great discussion on this topic that followed, the discussion was lost to the ether. Uh, So a little technical difficulty, um, but luckily the rest of class was saved. And uh, so the discussion portion is missing for now. And I'm going to let class conclude as it was live. Seems like a good spot to conclude class tonight. Thanks everyone for being here. Namaste. Feel, uh, be sure to tune in next week. We're going to be working with not only this material, but we're going to expand it and, you know, sort of review uh, some of the stuff we worked on in Chaitanya's class, some of the stuff that Yogita presented to us recently, um, and, is, and use it as uh, fodder for our conscious, uh, creative consciousness class um, that's, that's going to be led by Marcella and myself. And uh, anything else about it that I can plug real quick before we go? No. Yeah, oh, yo, last thing. If you like yoga and you know that something happened tonight, we're doing an in-person training at Shoshone after the 4th of July, so we'd love to see you. But I'm looking around being like, you yeah, probably all already knew that. So maybe that's for somebody listening to the recording. So anyway, thank you all so much. Namaste. See you next week.